Hey guys, it's Richard. I'm going to be showing you my Murakumo Huga deck profile. So it's the new support from Phantasmal Steed Restoration. So it's all about Huga and all the same name support. So I'm going to be showing you guys the build that I have. So as of today, we don't have that promo. The one that uh, comes in November where it gives all your dudes extra 5k. So this is the list for now. Starter is Cat Devil because uh, the deck is all about furries. So we have to have the furry starter in the furry deck. So Cat Devil is the only optional starter for this deck. So right off the bat for the grade threes, we're running four copies of Samurai Chieftain Huga. So this is your main ride. You really don't wanna have to ride the other grade threes in this deck at all, but you can ride cards like Shiryuki if you need to, but this is the main ride of the whole deck. So, its first skill is, yeah, once per turn, you Cannonblast 1, you search for one card in your deck with the same grade as one of your opponent's units and call it. And then you change the name of all of you and your opponent's units to this card's name. So it's, they all become Huga. Name change. They don't gain the name, it's, they're all just changed. The second skill is you Soul Blast a grade 3 and you return all your opponent's units with the same name uh, as this card's name and you return them back to their deck and they shuffle their deck. So all their rear guards get shuffled back. So it's a, you blow up the field basically, you're shuffling cards back into their deck, which um, basically means they can't gain triggers, hopefully, if they have a bunch of normal units on the board. So it helps you prevent, you know, damage triggers. So it's a really good card and also a lot of the same card name stuff when the effects you're getting a lot of power off of that as well. So that's why you want to make sure you do that every turn, and you want to have the counter blast for it every turn. Next up, I am running three copies of Fantasy Petal Storm Shiryuki. I was originally running four. I downed it to three just because it does get kind of clunky when you have too many grade threes. Uh, and, you know, like you want to make sure that you see Hyuga as your main ride. You don't have to be forced to ride Shiryuki. Um, but her skill, and you can still recycle her very well so the three still works fine so what she does is van rear guard when she's placed you soul blast two choose three units in your opponent's front row to get minus 5k if this is on van or guard they get 10 minus 10k instead so it's a basically the guardian that shuts down your opponent's big numbers for the turn it's a really great card defensively it's one of the main reasons why Merkuma is staying consistently meta um the other skill is vanguard circle when its attack does not hit you return a copy of Shiryuki in, that's in your drop and you return it back to your hand. So that that's what does make her a good ride target is she still has that skill to put pressure on your opponent so if they do guard the vanguard you do get another Shiryuki back in your hand cons just for free. So that consistency can help kind of work work you through the deck. Uh, if you're being damage denied maybe and you can't use Huga's skill you can run ride Shiryuki and work with that. But for the most part you really want to just be on Huga the entire game. Next up for grade three is I'm running two copies of the new Hiyaki Vogue, Covert Demonic Dragon Hiyaki Vogue. So what he does is once per turn, you counterblast one uh, during your main phase and discard a card. You search your deck for another copy of Hiyaki Vogue, call to rear, and then all your you if you have five units um, or more, all of your units with the same name as as this will gain 10k. So if you use Hugo's skill and call this from the deck, this becomes Hugo. Use its skill to call Hyaki Vogue. This one still is considered Hyaki Vogue, and this one will be the only one to get the power. But then you can use this copy and then give this another, give the whole board that is Hyuga another 10k. So that's really nice when you have two. Um, the card honestly works fine at just one copy as well, because you don't really care for the search, you just want the power. It's the giving all units of the same name as this unit, the 10k, and since it's Hyuga, uh, all your Hugas will gain 10k, so your whole board's gaining power. So, But I run two just because um, if I'm on Shiryuki and I have one in hand, I can call it call it another Hyaki Vogue, and since they're both Hyaki Vogues, they both get 10k, so they're good, you know, 22 or 27k beat sticks if one's on an Excel marker. So I like to run two just in case I am on Shiryuki. And, you know, searching out the other one and using the counter blast to just beat your opponent to death is also fun. Next, I'm running two copies of this dude, Stealth Fiend, One-Eyed Nyodu, or Nyodu. So he's 
pretty dank because what he does is he has a continuous ability of if you have another unit with the same name as this unit and you van or rear, he gets boost. And then uh, at the end of the turn, if you have five or more units total, you move him to the soul and you draw a card. So you get the soul for the for Hugo's cost, the soul blast to grade three. Uh, you gain soul for Shiryuki. Um, this deck does use up a lot of soul, so this helps out a lot. Uh, what you can do is if you don't want to run the two Yaki, you can just tone this down and get a third copy of Neodu. That works just as fine. I'm running two just because uh, I usually just use them maybe twice a game anyways, max. And, you know, you don't want to draw too many cards because then you're constantly searching and filtering out through your deck that you might deck out. Uh, but other than that, this card's just really great. And even if you're not on Huga, and you just call two of these, because they their skills to activate because you have another copy of each other on the rear guard circle, so you can move them to the souls, move both of them to the soul, and uh, get the draw effect off both. So really, really good card. It's a great three, but it's still basically a booster. It has an it has an Excel marker, but you never ever 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 want to ride this card ever. So just keep your eye out for that. Lastly for grade three is the real MVP of this whole deck. Uh, Covert Demonic Dragon Densetsu Anarch, or Anarch, however it's pronounced. So what this does is, when it's placed from the deck, auto, it gets 5k, so you call it with Huga for that effect. The other skill is continuous. All of your rear guards with the same name as your Vanguard get 5k. So, like, it's a free 5k to all your units when you use Huga's skill, which is free. It's just busted. Um, I only run the one copy just because it doesn't have a gift marker. Uh, I don't want my hand to get too clunked with grade threes. There's a lot of grade threes already. And the one copy just works fine when you're kind of just pulling out a finisher. When you know you're going to win that turn, you just this is going to be your search target. Uh, and yeah, that's basically what it is for. It's kind of just like that last bit of push. And that extra 5k to kill your opponent. So really, really, really good card. Alright, so now we're moving on to grade twos. Two copies of Switch Swift Archer Fushimi. So Fushimi's skill is continuous. If you have four more rearguards, it gets 5k. So it's a good beat stick against like Force Clans, where you want to swing at them for 14 or 19k when it's on the rear by itself. If you have an 8k booster, it's 22. So good against Protect and Excel base numbers as well. It's really, really good in that sense. Other skills, when it's placed, uh, you choose one of your units, and that unit can attack something in the back row. So that's really helpful. If you're going early game, and let's say you have like a million rat on rear, you just go like clone it. Um, if you ride the next turn, you can use Fushimi, or you know, just giving anything on the rear the ability to attack the back row, and you can target cards that might be really annoying. Like, I know these aren't really meta relevant cards, but the first that comes to mind is like Thousand Ray Pegasus, Flame of Hope Aramo, um, there's some good like Dimension Police cards that just stay on the board uh, at the end of your opponent's turn sometimes that you would just want to kind of poke them to get them out of the way. Um, so it's great for 8Ks that can't poke your opponent's Vanguard, but they can still get rid of stuff in their back row. So that's always helpful. Uh, but Fushimi is mostly here just for the, the extra 5K power. So that's what we only run two. Next up, I am running four copies of Stealth Beast Spellhound. So Spellhound it's pretty funny because he costs a lot of soul, but you can kind of work with that just because you have a lot of ways to gain soul in this deck. But um, honestly, I just have a really love-hate relationship with this card because for the most part, half the time it's vanilla, but the other half of the time it does make up for a lot of power that I'm missing out on. So what it does is when it's placed, van or rear, you soul blast two. Ouch, right? Um, then you search your deck for another copy of Stealth Hound, or Spell Hound. Uh, you call it to rear, and then you increase or decrease the power of this and the unit called uh, to equal the power of your own Vanguard. So, just kind of skipping ahead, if I go into the greed ones, we're running Jiraiya, and what Jiraiya does is it gives your Vanguard an extra 10k. So, if your Vanguard has 10k and then you call Spell Hound, uh, your, both your spell hounds will then become 22k beat sticks. And that's before counting the power on the Excel marker, so 27 on that one by itself. So that's one way if you don't have like uh, Hyaki Vogue or Anarch to give power. That's one way to, this is card's one way to make that 
work if you have Jiraiya on the board. So, but it does cost two Counter Blasts and two Soul Blasts to set that up. So, you really kind of have to be in a really tough situation to work with that. But for the most part, it's really there just to build a board without using Counter Blast because you want to save Huga. You want to save all your Counter Blasts mostly just for Huga's skill because that's the only way the deck kind of keeps rolling. If you don't have any Counter Blast, you're kind of stuck. So, that's why I decided to run this. The other thing that I was thinking of doing is just running four copies of Fushimi and then running like one copy of uh, Sensual Arrester, just the one copy just because um, uh, it's still a good beat stick if it's in your opponent, if it's behind your Vanguard. So that's another thing you can do, but for now, um, I'm testing out the Spellhound and kind of working around with that, and I'm liking it so far, but it is subject to change, so we'll see how it goes from there. So feel free to try doing the Fushimis and the Sensual Arrester instead. All right. Because we're running Shiryuki, we have to run four copies of Stealth Fiend Jokotsu Girl. So Jokotsu Girl skill is when its attack does not hit and it's on the rearguard circle, you search for up to two Shiryukis from the top seven, and you put one in your hand and you put the other in your drop. If you don't find any, or you choose not to add any Shiryukis, you can soul charge one after you shuffle. Uh, if you only find one, the one copy goes to your hand, it says that in parentheses there. So this is your soul engine, this is your Shiryuki engine. Uh, it's super, it's a 9k, so against four sticks, you're basically guaranteeing this not to hit, which is nice to proc off the effects. So Chikotsu Girl is, the, is one of the MVPs, for sure. All right, now we're on to the grade ones. I am running three copies of Stealth Rogue of Summoning, Jiraiya. So what Jiraiya, does is when it's placed on the vanguard circle you draw a card and then you pick a card from your hand and put it on the bottom of your deck. I just I'm decided to run this over sh uh, Shudder Rock because I really don't like to use the counter blast for Shudder Rock when I want to save it for cards like Hiyaki Vogue and Huga. So I would rather have it where I feel like I can use Jiraiya just for circumstance situations where I'm like okay I need power let's use Jiraiya for a little bit of push. Or most of the time when I was running Sugar Rock, I was just riding Sugar Rock because I didn't want to ride any of my other grade ones, which I would definitely rather save for the early game. So that's basically that. So helping you fix your hand is cool if you ride it. The other skills act once return on rear guard. You kind of must one, choose one of your vanguards, it gets 10k. So that's there for comboing off with, you know, Spellhound. So if your Vanguard has an extra 10k, then you call Spellhound, use Spellhound skill, match uh, both of the copies with your Vanguard, so makes it easier to get those big boy numbers and help you push. So that's why I'm deciding to run Dry. If I'm not running Spellhound, I might run Shudder Rock, but honestly, I really just never have like a situation where I feel like I really need the Shudder Rock, so I'm just going to work with Jiraiya for now. But of course, Sugar Rock is still a good card. So if you like Sugar Rock better, go for it. Next up for grade ones, it's the Shiryuki engine. So we got to run the grade one copy, which is Selfine Rainy Madame. So what Rainy Madame does is uh, when your other unit's attack does not hit, you move this into the soul and you choose a Shiryuki from your drop point in your hand. So it's with any unit's attack. So it just makes getting sure you could way easier. Um, if you soul blast it with Hugo or like any of the other uh, soul blasting skills, you just get that copy back with Rainy Madame. And since it goes back into the soul, you're just getting soul fodder for the Shiryuki cost anyways. Just a really, really good card. Definitely run for if you're running Shiryukis. And lastly for the grade ones, great card, Stealth Beast, Million Rat. This is how you build up your board super early. So what it does is act, uh, if you do not have another copy of Million Rat on your rearguard circle, you search your deck for up to one um, Million Rat, and the searched copy gets minus 4k until the end of the turn. So on your next turn, you have two 8k boosters, which is awesome. Um, you're mostly going to be cycling between your front row, that's because there's a lot of grade threes and a lot of twos that you're going to be using for beat six. So getting those two boosters early and just having them there is really helpful because you don't have to worry about them going away. There's not a lot of control decks that kill back row as much. I mean, I know Narakami moves things up and then they can 
kill them, so that is an issue. But because uh, Million Rat calls itself, if you put this in behind your Vanguard and it's safe, hopefully, and then one of your Million Rat goes away, you can use its skill again to search out another Million Rat. So getting out those rats, deck thinning, pull, just anytime you're pulling cards out of your deck that aren't triggers, you're helping your deck trigger thin, and then it's going to help you create your opponent to death. So that was it for the grade ones. Now we're moving on to triggers. So I'm running four copies of the furry crit, Moon Edge, and just three copies of Zomba Rider. You know, there's we're playing a Dragon Empire deck. You know, we gotta we gotta take advantage of the number of dragons we can run. <laughs> there's just not a lot of dragon based cards in this deck. It's just so funny. Um, yeah, so we're running seven crit and we're doing five draws. So onto the draw triggers, we're doing four copies of the draw PG, which is like every single standard deck at this point. Um, so Sentinel, when it's placed on the guard, you discard a card and you protect one of your units. And then one copy of the Cat Rogue. Uh, I decided to do five draw, seven crit, just because you, you are looking for a lot of combo pieces in this deck and that extra draw can help. Um, also, Hyaki Vogue has a discard cost, so if you have Cat Rogue in your hand, you can just pitch that makes it easier to pick your target. And then drawing cards helps you with discard fodder as well. So there's always that. Lastly, for triggers, you got your four copies of your heal because, you know, healing is nice and 20k shields and everyone runs four heals. So that was basically the deck. Um, the way that you're basically going to be having your setup 90% of the time is you got your Hyaki and you probably have some type of Jokotsu girl from early game set up. Uh, maybe you could have, you would have called Spellhound or Fushimi to the rearguard circle. But the main thing is when you get your Excel marker, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting either the Anark or whatever his name is, this dude. You're going to be putting him on that Excel circle when you call him out with Hyuga and giving all of these dudes an extra 5k. So that's pretty much the game plan with this deck is just big beefy numbers and beating your opponent to death, deck thinning, and potentially board wiping them if you know if you really need to get rid of their board. So that was the deck. Hope you all enjoy it. Uh, I'm still kind of testing out with this deck right now. I might do the Fushimi with the um, Central Rester just because Hyuga does let you search out pretty much anything as long as your opponent has the grade. So that means if your opponent has a grade 2 rearguard, you can just search Central Arrestor, put it behind your Vanguard, and then that's an additional unit that can attack. And if you have an Arch, or an Arc, whatever his name is, Central Arrestor is getting 5k, so it's a 14k poke, just from an additional attack. So that's always helpful, but again, I'm, I'm playing around with this deck, testing out ideas, and I'm honestly just really enjoying this deck a lot. I think this is my favorite standard deck right now. And it's meta, so that's even better. So that was the deck profile, hope you all enjoyed it, hope you're all having a good day, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!